and I am back here on the channel. It is the most earth-breaking, ground-shaking, but never media show money taken. The man, the myth, the legend, the most electrifying villain on YouTube Entertainment today. Mr. General Saad. And what do I gotta say? Today is about Picard. Episode 4, Absolute Candor. And, uh, you know... There's a lot of people who have gotten into specifics and characters and things like that. And like I said before in my previous reviews, I'm going to hit this from a non-Trek perspective. Because that's the kind of review that I want to give for anyone who's just watching this that maybe knew about Next Generation but doesn't know about the stuff behind it. Um, or, you know, they're just looking at this from a general audience perspective, right? Because when you're approaching these properties, some people are going to look at this and not know all the rich myth and lore behind the Trek universe. And I find it odd. Every episode that I've been light on, some people have been hard on. Some episodes that I've been hard on, they've been light on. And this is going to be one of those. Look, this episode to me was horrendous for a couple of different reasons, okay? Okay. If you just take out the glaring, obvious politics about the border and immigration that are clearly woven into this story, which takes place in the 20th century, look, there's been points that have been made about this show, is that in this timeline, in this framing, we're supposed to be above uh, these racisms and divides and things like that. And <clears throat> Star Trek has always had a basic political ideology to it, but it's politics built in the world of Trek, and not so much Trek driven by politics of our modern world. And I think this show is just a narrative mess. It is a mess of a show. This episode had some cool things. I do the the one character with the sword there. Um, I was so bored, I'm not even... I know, like, Ralphie... And, uh, you know, Picard, but I, I mean, I haven't even cared like I normally would on a review to even know some of these characters' names. Because while I like the captain, he is clearly uh, a sort of merging of like Malcolm Reynolds and other things. Kirksman Trek does a lot of taking from other sources and then boiling it down to simplicity. There is just a lot of things in this story that when borrowed from something else, they make it good. But the problem is, it's good because it's borrowed from something else. Also, there is uh, the storylines are all over the place and jumping from, from beat to beat. It's very jarring. Look, this only has eight episodes, and for eight episodes, it should be tight and concise. One of my favorite shows is Breaking Bad. And granted, the first one or two episodes, one could argue, are slow, but it ramps up. And by the time you get to the eighth episode and you get into the next season, that's where uh, Breaking Bad really picks up steam and gets better. But I don't see this show doing that. This show just gets narratively messy and creatively worse as they go along. Uh, for instance, there is one instance where uh, the the uh, raw mealing guy, I believe his name's Malik or something like that, and the, and uh, I'm just going to say Dada's daughter, um, you know, the, the twin, if you will, uh, they have this whole weird, like, uh, montage of them... Uh, you know, falling for each other and sliding across the board cube. And so it's it's terrible. It's it's terrible. It's god awful. Like love stories in Trek never felt this kind of awkward and forced. And that whole scene is forced and unnecessary. It's like it's like two or three minutes that is not necessary in the show. Um, the banter between the crew. Some of it is good, and some of it is just. Just, ugh, just terrible. Um, what else? I mean, this episode really had nothing to it. I mean, there's a space battle at the end that's quite honestly boring. And I never thought I'd say that about 
you know, Star Trek space battles, but, it, it, you know, not much happens, and, you know, when he's down on Earth, and they're doing their thing, you know, there's a, there's these nuns that are, like, uh, the greatest nuns ever, and they're assassin nuns, like, Romulan assassin nuns, what? It's, it's like a mixture of, like, Kill Bill ideas and stuff, I, I, I don't know, anyways, uh, you know, to which he has to go back and get this, uh, this kid who, um, he left on this planet, and he trained with the warrior nuns, but he can't be a nun, because he's not a chick, so, uh, you know, the absolute candor in the title is what these nuns have with, uh, anyone, basically, and, you know, they have to take up a cause, but the cause has to be a lost cause, which that would in itself is kind of bleak, but, you know, I'll get to that in a bit. I mean, uh, this episode is all over the place. And I like the idea of a uh, person with a sword. But with phasers, it, it just doesn't jive. It's like they want a Western sci-fi feel. They want a Trek feel. There's too many competing tones in this show in general. Absolute candor to me though is a short review it was boring it was bland the romantic elements were terrible some people have said this is better than the other episodes I disagree I think that this episode the dialogue is slightly better in certain areas and I guess the writing isn't as all over the place but the tones and things like that are in direct competition with each other I think that this episode is just boring. It's a boring episode in an eight-part show that airs once a week, and this is just not good. And the fact that they brought Seven of Nine... Look, I like Seven of Nine. There is a reason to have her, but I, I'm struggling with timeline here because how would her and Picard meet? I mean, maybe it's possible, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I need a... A good explanation. I need a lot of explanation really on a lot of things in this show. And I'm currently going back through and watching uh, STD, the first season. And so far it's all right, but I see a lot of things in it that I can see why people get salty about this trek. There's, it's like they want to borrow certain things, twist certain things, and alter certain things. And you know what? We've seen this in Star Wars with, uh, you know, Kathleen Kennedy and her goons trying to make things uh, fit what they want to put into the universe. And Trek is doing the same exact thing. And so does Doctor Who and all these other shows. So overall, what do I think of Absolute Candor? Honestly, my shorthanded review. Because this is this I don't even want to get into in depth because there's really no depth to this episode. It's a boring episode. They, you know, they talk about this. Uh, they give us more context behind the uh, Romulans moving. Uh, a crazy rom-com happens in the middle of the episode that's forced it out of place. And I'm really not feeling the new crew. I hate the science officer. She's so annoying. Uh, her dialogue is terrible. I don't know why she's in the show. Um, the captain, uh, the new, the captain of the ship, he's okay. But he is a mixture of a lot of other characters I've seen. And, um, just John Luke in general holds this show up. If they kill him, that would be the worst mistake because this show has nothing. This show has nothing to hold it stand alone. And I see what they're trying to do, but I don't think it's going to work. I think you need to keep on Sir Patrick Stewart as long as you can because once he's off the show, this thing's just going to fall apart. Anyways, uh... This episode was terrible, it was boring, it was long, the space battle was garbage, there was a rom-com in the middle of it, the whole political angle was very much clear as to what they were driving to there, and I just didn't like it. I give this episode a 3 out of 10. Uh, this, Anyways, if you guys like this video, go ahead, hit that like button if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button if you're liking this handsome face. And as always, remember the one and only rule here in the fandom zone. Kneel before General Zod.